A Filipino led the way for a team of researchers to complete an international study about dark quantum matter. We talk about, we talk about what it is all about with scientist Jason Cosme. Here on the final word. Jason, great to have you with us. Congratulations on discovering this dark quantum matter. What is it? Uh, yeah, first of all, my pleasure. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so basically, in a nutshell, what, uh, what our team has sort of uh, um, uh, looked into is this, this thing called dark quantum matter. And the way I would probably describe it in simple terms would be uh, it's the closest thing that we could have to something like an invisibility cloak that you see in... Uh, Star Wars. Oh, in Harry Potter. Harry so Potter. Harry Potter. So, so, yeah, so, wow. Like, uh, essentially, an ideal invisible cloak or an invisible object will not absorb or emit light. Yeah? So if something doesn't absorb or emit light, then our, our naked eyes cannot see them. So eventually, when you're talking about an invisible cloak, if somebody wears it, a human being can disappear uh, in thin air? <laughs> well, that's the idea for an invisible cloak. But the thing that we have discovered, however, <laughs> this is more like in the quantum world. And if you have seen this movie, Quantum Mania. Yeah, in, in, well, Ant-Man and Wasp. Exactly. So you have to go into what is known as the subatomic sort of level, a very, very small, tiny world, in, in order to start really seeing these wonderful things of like being in the quantum world, seeing in, having this invisible quantum dark matter, if you like. So. But uh, my question now is, how did you discover and stumble into this dark quantum matter? Um, so actually, uh, the idea of uh, another name for dark quantum matter, especially in, in, in terms of technical term, is called dark state. So it's a type of quantum state that, as I've said, it doesn't emit or it doesn't absorb light, right? And it has been uh, proposed a long time ago, in fact. We weren't the first ones to really, uh, you know, uh, think about this or propose this. What our team has done, however, is to uh, provide a new way of uh, realizing a dark quantum state or, or making one, uh, if you like. And the way the study sort of started was, um, uh, I was already here in the Philippines, so I did a, a, a three-year postdoc stint mm. in, the, in the group uh, in, in Germany. And uh, when I returned back to the Philippines uh, as a professor at the University of the Philippines, um, Back in 2021, uh, I was just like most theoretical discoveries, kind of, uh, just scribbling down my notes, you know, I'm just going about my merry way. Yeah, I mean, me and my pen and paper, just scribbling a yeah, yeah. bunch of equations. And um, at that time, it was the height of the pandemic, right? And yeah, so, and uh, we were already sort of continuing our collaboration. Um, and. I was discussing, uh, it was just one Zoom uh, session where I was catching up with the first author of this paper. So if there are 10 stages, uh -huh. let's say for research and development of this dark quantum matter, where are you at right now? And from where you are right now, what would be the next stage? Ah, so um, I would say we are very much in the early stage uh -huh. um, because- Stage I one. Stage one, well, stage two probably, because I would probably, I don't know, if I were to put a number in it, stage one is sort of like the discovery phase, mm -hmm. kind of like mm -hmm. understanding whether we can really see it or not. Stage two is probably uh, what we have kind of um, realized when we actually see it in, in reality in experiment, right? The further down the road, obviously, you will start thinking about potential applications, things like this, uh, things like this. So, uh, yeah, so we're still very much in the early stage um, and... Uh, yeah, hopefully. When you say applications, this is like the invisible cloak? Uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, sorry to burst uh, everyone's <laughs> bubble, it's not going to be an invisible, it's not going to be an invisible cloak because as I've said, it has to because be it's something like tiny. what we watch in the movies, exactly. right? Invisible cloak, a time machine. Right, right. I mean, traveling from one world to another, the multiverse. Right, right. No, <laughs> you all uh, see, watch, we watch all of these uh, Marvel Exactly. Uh, and, and DC films right. uh, being transported from one um, universe uh, to another. But of course, for many of, for many of us Filipinos who really don't know about physics, what does creating time crystals in a dark state quantum system mean to us right now? Ah, um, that's a very good question and, and thanks for, for asking that. Yeah. I think, um, so let me maybe answer that question on, on, on two levels. Like on, obviously on one level, uh, it's part of, basic 
science or basic research, meaning it is fundamental research mm -hmm. and the type of questions that we ask, the type of research that we do, mm -hmm. uh, we are not so much focused on the short-term immediate uh, applications of these things. Uh, it's very much similar to how um, you know quantum physics 50 years ago when the founders of quantum physics they they were formulating and were doing the math they weren't really thinking of what would be the applications and I'm sure this. at that time they never even thought of what you'd be doing now exactly exactly so and this is really a new discovery right and uh, yeah so um, on one level you know it's 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 important for us to sort of really push forward in, in doing fundamental research because who knows, maybe down the line, uh, we will find a good use out of it, right? Like what? How, how will it impact the daily life of Rico Hizon <laughs> and the daily life of Jay Cosme? Yeah, so uh, I, again... Uh, Could it be in computers? Could it be uh, like what we, we discussed with Mike earlier, artificial intelligence, robots? I mean, I mean, we're just trying to uh, right. uh, let our imaginations go wild. Which is important, by the way. If you yeah. were to do science, it's one of the things that I would actually suggest, you know, for young scientists, kind of uh, aspiring scientists, to let your imaginations mm. go wild. Uh, but, but to answer your question, uh, so one potential application and something that uh, I think has already been uh, simple, applied. Simple, even just the most simple. Um, the most simple, uh, I mean, quantum computer would be something. Mm. Uh, and I'm sure uh, some of you have already heard about quantum computer. Um, what is a quantum computer? What can it do? So quantum computer People is basically... People who are ignorant like myself in <laughs> no, uh, quantum computers. <laughs> right. So uh, basically, uh, the idea uh, for a quantum computer would be uh, it will do the things that our normal day-to-day -day computer could do, but much faster and much more efficient. Mm. Uh, it's still on the horizon. We still don't have a, a proper functioning, fully functioning quantum computer, but efforts are being done along the way. Google, for example, and IBM, they are actually building uh, their, their quantum computer and already kind of like testing what it could do. Like warp speed. <laughs> no, it's, it's really more like doing <laughs> calculations in a very fast, mm. uh, very fast way. Yeah? Mm. And, and an application of dark state is actually making more stable, uh, more stable uh, quantum bit, you know, or this is the information that you could store in a quantum computer. Wow, so much to discover with uh, dark quantum matter. When you get to the next stage of applications, we will definitely have you back here <laughs> on the program. Thank you so much Thank and you. congratulations uh, to uh, um, discovering uh, the dark quantum matter with your fellow researchers in Germany. Jay Cosme, a Filipino physicist scientist. Thanks.